Welcome back to Biomechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video and the next, we're actually going to look at a biomechanics problem in which we're going to be asked to calculate three things uh, using the torque at the elbow joint. We're going to be asked to calculate the force exerted by the elbow flexors, and usually we just say the biceps brachii and then calculate the mechanical advantage of the biceps brachii, and then calculate the joint reaction force um, associated with the elbow in this hold. Okay, so let's first look at the problem. So we've got this guy, this is his right arm, and he has his elbow bent to 90 degrees, and he's just holding a ball in his hand. And what we want to do is we want to calculate the force that is exerted by, in general, the elbow flexors, but the biceps brachii, in order to hold his forearm and the ball in that position. And so this is going to be a torque problem, okay? So here's a few things about this, um, peeling away all the skin and all that stuff, just looking at the bones. Uh, right here, this B, this force being exerted directly perpendicular upwards, this is the force exerted by the biceps brachii. Now, just a little basic stuff here. Remember, the biceps are going to attach to the forearm via a tendon, but basically, uh, the biceps are going to pull on the tendon, which pulls on the bone to keep it supported upwards. So, this is going to be the force vector for the biceps pointed upwards. But then we have the weight of the whole forearm. We're going to assume the weight is eight pounds. That's the entire weight of the forearm, bones, skin, everything like that. Okay. And then we've got the weight of the ball, which is 40 pounds, and that's being held in the hand. Okay. The other thing also is we have the distance between the tendon of the bicep and the axis of rotation, which is the elbow joint itself. This distance is going to be four centimeters. That's the distance of the biceps brachii. This distance of four centimeters, this is going to be our distance of the bicep brachii, or DBB. Then we have the ball over here, which is held in the hand. It's 40 pounds. And the distance between the axis of rotation and the center of mass of the ball, which is all this right here, is going to be 35 centimeters. And that's what we're going to call D ball. Again, the distance between the axis of rotation and the center of mass of the ball. Then we have the forearm. And this is going to include the bones, the flesh, the muscles in here, all that. And the weight of the forearm itself is 8 pounds. And the distance between the center of mass right here of the forearm and the axis of rotation is the second line right here. That is our D arm, the distance of the arm. And that's going to be half the length of D ball. In some kinds of problems, they'll just straight up give you a number for this. But in this case, they're telling you it's half the length of D ball which is 35 centimeters. And we could actually say that's 17 and a half centimeters. We'll see that in just a minute, okay? We need to know two things for this problem. One, that each individual torque is equal to the perpendicular force times the distance from the axis of rotation, okay? And then if we add up all the torques, they have to be zero. And really in any introductory biomechanics course, you're dealing with static equilibrium. So the elbow is just held there. It's not moving. It's not rotating. So the sum of the torques will always be zero. All right. And if we think about this, the biceps are going to tend to create a torque upwards because the force is exerted upwards. The bicep is what keeps your arm from rotating downwards. So the, you don't rotate your arms down like this because the bicep is producing a torque upwards. Okay? But the forearm and the ball itself are going to tend to produce a torque that goes down. They're going to tend to rotate the forearm downwards because they're going to be subject to gravity. Right? So we're going to have two negative torques and then this one from the biceps will be positive. Right? So let's look at it. The sum of the torques have to be zero. And if we add all these torques, first of all, let's put it in symbolic form. We have the force of the arm times the distance of the arm. That's going to be this forearm weight right here. Okay, And it's negative. And we add on the next term. We have the force due to the ball going downwards times the distance from the ball to the axis of rotation. This one's also going to be negative because it's tending to produce torque downwards. And then our last one is the force due to the biceps brachii times the distance from the biceps brachii to the axis of rotation. This one's going to be positive because it's producing a torque upwards to hold up the forearm. Now we have to do two other things. Uh, we're actually going to have to 
uh, determine the force of the ball and the force of the arm in newtons. We generally don't want to leave these in pounds. Okay. Now, first we deal with the ball. It's 40 pounds. The way we can convert this to units of newtons is by multiplying by 9.81 meters per second squared and dividing by 2.2 pounds per kilogram. Um, if you're ever given pounds, this is always how you convert to newtons. And so the 40 pounds of the ball is going to be equivalent to 178.36 newtons. We're going to do the same for the weight of the forearm. It's 8 pounds. We multiply by 9.81 meters per second squared, that's g, and then divide by the conversion factor 2.2 pounds per kilogram. And we get that the force of the arm, which is a weight pulling downwards, is 35.67 newtons. Okay, so we've got these in newtons right now. Let's go ahead and plug in these numbers and then we'll rearrange it and solve for the force due to the biceps brachii. So now I've got zero equals. This is because I'm adding up the torques and they have the sum to be zero. Zero is equal to, let's do the ball first. The ball, we calculated its force was 178.36 newtons. So 178.36 newtons times the distance from the axis of rotation. Well, this distance was 35 centimeters. It's customary to put this in meters. So the way to convert centimeters to meters is to divide this number by 100. 35 divided by 100 is 0 0.35 meters. Okay, And it's negative because that's producing a torque that's going to tend to rotate the arm downwards. That's going to be negative. Next, we'll do the arm. The arm we determined of having a force of 35.67 newtons times the distance from the axis of rotation. So this eight pounds of force that's due to the weight of the forearm is exerted at a distance of half D ball, where D ball was the distance from the axis of rotation to the ball. Well, it's half of 35 centimeters, so that would be 17.5 centimeters. And if we convert that to meters, we divide 17 and a half by 100, and we get 0 0.175 meters, all right? And it's going to give me negative again because this is a weight and it's going to tend to rotate the arm downwards, right? Now for the positive term, this is going to be the torque that's positive because the biceps are going to tend to want to rotate the arm upwards, okay? Because it's a muscle preventing this arm from rotating downwards. So we don't know what the force due to the biceps are. Uh, that's what we're asked to calculate, but we do know the distance from the axis of rotation, which is 0 0.04 meters. Again, the way I determine that is I know the distance between the biceps attachment and the axis of rotation, dBB, is 4 centimeters. So I can divide that by 100 and I get 0 0.04 meters. Now this is really just a matter of cleaning this mess up. Um, it's really just going to be a bunch of multiplication um, and then solving for the variable of interest. So if I multiply 178.36 newtons times 0 0.35 meters, I get this first term is going to be negative because of the negative sign, negative 62.426 newton meters. Again, an individual torque, any torque is going to have units of newton meters. And that's from the newtons from the force and the meters from the distance, right? And then I have this negative 35.67 newtons times 0 0.175 meters. That's going to give a torque from the arm of negative 6.2427, again, newton meters. Plus the force due to the biceps brachii times 0 0.04 meters. All right? And this whole thing is still summing to be zero, so I have zero on the left side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two individual torques over to the left side. Okay, so this negative 62.426 and negative 6.2427. I'm going to add these over to the other side. And so when that happens, on the left side now, instead of a zero, I now have the sum of these two, and it'll be the positive form. That's 68.6687 newton meters. And that's equal to the rest of this, which is on the right side, the force due to the biceps brachii times 0 0.04 meters. All right, and now the way to solve for the force right here is to divide through by the meters here, 0 0.04 meters, and so what I'll ultimately get 
is the force due to the biceps brade guy is 68.6687 newton meters. That's from right here on the left side. And when I divide through by 0.04 meters, I get approximately a force of 1,717 newtons. I'm neglecting significant digits right here, but it's going to be approximately this value. All right. So this is the force exerted by the biceps. All right. And really the elbow flexors in general. So that actually takes care of the force part of this problem. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is calculate what's called the mechanical advantage of the bicep. Okay. The way that you calculate the mechanical advantage, generally speaking, is you're going to use the uh, the force that's needed to be lifted. Okay, this is the weight that the bicep is having to overcome, or really the weight that any muscle is having to overcome. And then you divide by the force exerted by that muscle. Okay, so if this was the mechanical advantage of the quadricep, let's say, which we'll actually do that eventually, this would be the weight needed to be lifted by the quadricep divided by the forces exerted by the quadricep. All right. Now, how much force is needed to be lifted? Well, to calculate this, I'm simply going to add these two forces from up here because the bicep is having to counteract the weight of the forearm plus the weight of the ball. So that's going to be the sum of these two forces, 178.36 newtons and 35.67 newtons. These sum to approximately 214 newtons. We just calculated the force due to the bicep's break eye. That was 1,717 newtons. When you divide this out, you get a decimal. It's going to be approximately 0.125, and that's less than 1. Also, understand that 0.125 is exactly the fraction 1 8th, so I may use 1 8th from here on out, but 1 8th is less than 1. And this brings up a really important point about the biceps. The biceps are what we call a class 3 lever. Okay, I'm actually going to blow this up for just a minute. A third class lever or a class 3 lever is defined as a situation where you have the force that's being exerted, that's the M here for muscle, the force that's being exerted is between the weight, which is over here on the right side, or R for resistance, the weight, and the fulcrum. So it's a little confusing because of the letters they're using. But the point is, is the muscle, the force that's being exerted, is between the fulcrum, which is the axis of rotation, and the weight being lifted, the resistance. Again, if we think about it in this problem, here's the rotation right here. Here's the force being exerted upwards. And then all the weight is concentrated over here. And so the force is being exerted between the fulcrum, the rotation point, and the weight, all this stuff over here. When you have a situation like that, it, it turns out to be a very inefficient muscle. Okay? And so what has to happen in order to lift a certain amount of weight, the muscle has to generate way more force just to lift the small amount of weight. In other words, what we're saying is that in order to lift 214 newtons, the bicep has to generate eight times the amount of force. Another way to think about that, if you were trying to lift 100 newtons of weight, the bicep would have to uh, generate eight times the amount of force, so 800 newtons. And so the bicep ends up being a really inefficient muscle because of that. Um, that's one of the reasons why the biceps or the elbow flexors in general are among the weaker muscle groups. They're first of all not a very large muscle relative to the other muscle groups of the body, but they're third class levers and so they're not going to be able to lift near as much weight given the amount of force. In fact, as we said, in order to be in a static equilibrium problem, so an isometric hold like this, your biceps have to generate anywhere around 8 to 10 times the amount of force just to lift um, some small amount of weight. Okay, But this is how you actually calculate mechanical advantage. We'll see a problem later on in another video where we'll look at the gastrocnemius, the calf muscle, and we'll see that's a far more efficient muscle. Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of calculating the force uh, due to the biceps brachii and then also calculating the mechanical advantage due to the biceps brachii. In the follow-up of this video, we'll then look at calculating the joint reaction force in the exact same problem. Make sure to join us then, but for now, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.